Hello, Lux On Demand family. My name is Greg, and I am so excited to welcome you here on YouTube. Typically, we do our services live every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. EST at twitch.tv slash Lux Digital Church. We get to chat with you live and talk with you live every week there. But we are also honored that you have joined us here on demand on YouTube. We have a lot of awesome resources and videos that you can check out here on our channel. But right now, I just want to introduce you to the talk that we have and say that I really hope that you enjoy. Thank you for joining us. We love you guys. Well, hey, Lux fam. It is Chino Mage, a.k.a. Andy, down here in Tampa. Well, I say down here, but obviously you're wherever you are. So it could be up there or across there or any of those things, wherever we are. I'm in Tampa. Welcome to Lux. And uh, we just want to give a big shout out, obviously, to The Lift, aka Pastor Mark, on vacation. Praying for you guys. Hope you have a safe trip back and that your flights don't get canceled and that everybody uh, has a good time. And <laughs> that honestly, you know, sometimes vacation with small kids is you need a vacation afterwards, so uh, get some rest. But uh, in the chat as well, if audio or, you know, things start popping off and, you know, we're having issues, let us know. We are, uh, we're running things without Mark. And so uh, real proud of the guys, uh, the entire team kind of scattered all over the place, but especially up north, you guys are doing great. Uh, don't worry about little audio snafus. We are, uh, Beggy Man says those skin tones look great. You know what, Beggy Man? Thank you. I kind of pride myself on that. Uh, I don't pride myself on that at all. Um, we are going to be in Discord a little bit later tonight chatting about some of these things, so uh, stay tuned for that as well. Uh, and if we could hit exclamation point Discord, if you have never joined a Discord server or if you are in need of a family or a uh, a kind of a church home that really, uh, or even just a, a home to talk with. We would love to have you uh, on Discord with us. You can pop over there and hang out with some super, super awesome people. Man, you guys loving, loving the love. You just keep it, keep it flowing. Huh? It's making me feel good because tonight, uh, we have <laughs> JT. Oh, JT. Thanks for the, thanks for the call back there. Throwing a fire extinguisher at somebody and Hitman. I love Hitman. Uh, anyway, tonight is going to be as <laughs> the lift. Tonight's going to be a little bit of a downer. So just stay with me. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've actually been in this collection of talks that's been all about our fears. And tonight is actually like the big one. Some would say it's the biggest one and, you know, or the second biggest one out there. And we're actually talking about the fear of the fear of dying. It's the big one. And so I hate to be blunt, blunt, but in chat right now, let me know, are you scared of dying? Are you scared of not living anymore? I, I, or have you ever even thought about it? Because my dad used to always tell me uh, as I was growing up to be mindful because I'm not making it out of this one alive and to take all these things, you know, with, with open hands and to love and be generous and all that. But, but are you scared to die? Gator girl pops in with her. Yes, I am scared. And JT, I am scared of that, which I've never experienced. Absolutely. Ab, absolutely. That's exactly what this is. Death is this universal unknown fear. Nobody is exempt from death, barring one person who we'll talk about in a little bit. Death is actually something that, that used to terrify me. It, it used to absolutely grip me with fear. But honestly, it doesn't anymore. And I'm going to do a little explanation here because it's not something to boast about because um, the first part of the story actually kind of super sucks. Mm, about 15 years ago, just over 15 years ago, my mother and my father called me to come over to their house and I, they were living in Tampa. I was living in Tampa at the time. So I drove over there and they sat me down at the dinner table and essentially mom told me that she had breast cancer. And it was a pretty serious form of breast cancer. And it started the whole process of surgery and radiation and chemo and her hair fell out. And um, it was it was awful. She was in a lot of pain, um, but she beat it. And she, you know, she was she was amazing. She was a fighter. She was a believer. She trusted that Jesus was going to save her through all of this. And literally for 10 years, she was fine. We we thought there was it was just a blip in her radar. I, at that point, did not know Jesus. And so I, I kept remembering watching her going, how are you so calm, mom? How are, how are you so uh, unafraid? I was scared. I was scared of losing her. She's my only mother, <laughs> of course. 
And I was scared of the unknown, like JT was popping off about in the chat. I actually, I got saved during that time. I, I found Jesus, well, Jesus found me, but I, I got rescued and yet I still didn't know how to reconcile my fear of death. And I felt like a bad Christian. I felt like a bad person actually for, for fearing the thing that all of my pastors and all of my leaders at the time told me that I literally shouldn't be afraid of because we've been promised eternal life through Jesus. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this is, how is this all going to work? Again, I was scared of the unknown. I'm all about safety and security. And yet I had no clue what any, any of that was. And so I was just walking around scared to die, scared to risk anything, scared that my mom was going to be just taken from me at the drop of a hat. Here's the thing. Many people, many people, including Christians, are afraid of death or afraid of dying. In fact, many people are consumed by that fear. On the flip side, they're actually, a lot of them are, are afraid of the suffering that they may feel when they're dying, being in pain for, for days or weeks or months, having to count on someone else to feed you and, and wash you and to watch over you, a loss of independence. That's, that's suffering, and, and a lot of people are scared of that. And if that describes you, you are not alone. So it's okay. <laughs> There's no guilt or shame or condemnation here. King David, uh, a man who wrote a lot of the Bible, the Old Testament is, basically, but uh, much of the Old Testament, and, and a man who knew God on a deeper level than pretty much everyone else, was actually sometimes afraid of dying. He, he wrote a, over half of the book of Psalms. So there's 150 Psalms, poems, songs, right in the smack dab in the middle of the Bible. And he wrote about half of them. And in one of them, which is Psalm 55, and we're going to put this scripture up for you, David writes, my heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. So if that's you, you're not alone and it's okay because we all have to deal with loss with death at some point so we're going to do what we've been doing throughout this entire collection of talks and just face the fear we're just gonna man or woman or person up to it right now so whenever you face up to something you have to start not with a how but with a why so we're going to ask the question why do people fear death and there's already been some answers, some, some real awesome answers in the chat. But if you have any other reasons, let me know why people would fear death. Is it that they fear the unknown? Is it that there's a, a worldview of, uh, that is all of these things? Is it because of suffering? Is it because you're going to leave people that you love? Is it because you think you're going to leave this legacy of hatred or anger or being remembered in ways that are not pleasant? Is it because you're scared? You've got serious FOMO. You're, you're going to fear, you're, you fear on missing out on kids or wives or husbands or spouses or grandkids or sisters and brothers. What else? I mean, keep, keep throwing those in the chat because I would love, love to hear them. Every part of this collection of talks on fear that we've been in has been associated with a Yoda quote, because honestly, Yoda is awesome. And Mark, when he was putting this all together, m kind of smashed them all up with Yoda. And it's it's brilliant. Uh, in episode three, so one of my least favorite Star Wars, don't hate you, don't at me. It's one of my least favorite Star Wars. But in episode three, Revenge of the Sith, Yoda and Anakin are talking. And Anakin is being a whiny baby, like he is in much of those early episodes, kind of in number two and number three. And Anakin has had visions of people dying around him. And I'm not going to give any spoilers if you've never seen it. But he, he's, he's grieving some visions of people around him dying. And Yoda, Jenny agrees with me that Yoda is awesome. Yoda busts out with the quote of the year. He says, look. Death is a natural part of life. Rejoice for those around you that transition into the force. Mourn for them, do not. Miss them, do not. Now, Yoda's not a Christian. He's not a pastor. He's not a leader or anything like that. And Star Wars is by no means a Christian-based franchise. But 
I would say that this is the most biblically based thing that is said in almost the entirety of Star Wars canon, barring maybe two or three other little things, because that is actually kind of the exact same thing I tell people as a pastor when I'm counseling them about fear. Now, I don't tell it in Yoda voice and I don't kind of have the mixed up sort of lingo or lexicon there, but I tell them this, don't fear death. Don't fear what, what is going to happen. It is a natural part of life. It is something that has to happen. Josh, we can get to episode three, the, the hatred I have for episode three in the post show, if you would like, because I have thoughts, my young man, I have thoughts. But back to death. It's a natural part of life. It's something that has to happen. And, and because we have faith in the God of all things, the Father of creation, the Lord of salvation, because we have faith in Jesus Christ, because of that faith, we don't mourn and grieve and fear death like the rest of the world. Having faith in Jesus means that death literally has no power over us. But why? Let's dig a little deeper here. God literally descended out of his heavenly realm to show us that death is not to be feared anymore. So paint this picture with me. God is spirit. He is eternal forever. This is tough to think about, and it kind of makes your head start to hurt, but he can't die. God has always existed. He will always be, and he has always been. So we use 10% of our brains, and even the 10% of my brain doesn't even work thinking about that. Okay, to show us that death was literally just a result of our sin, really the original sin of Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, kind of the rebellion that we've been in ever since day one, which are in the first couple of chapters of the Bible, and we can talk about that in, in the post-show if we need to as well. But because of, because of that sin, God had to show us that death was literally a result of that. So he sent his son Jesus, who came and walked on this earth and was doing you know ministry for 30 some odd years, and then he died, crucified on a tree crucified on a cross. And then three short days later, he was raised again. And not just like a ghost or a spirit walking around, but actual real flesh and real blood brought back to, my, brought back to life. This is where a lot of people check out on Christianity. This part is, is you know, I, let's get past any of the perceived bigotry or anything else that the world likes to throw at people that believe in Jesus. This is where people check out, and this is where I always pull up two scriptures. The first of them is in the book of Hebrews. Now, the writer of the New Testament book of Hebrews is still unknown as a person, so they don't actually know who he or she was. But this letter the, the book that we now know as Hebrews, was a letter and a book that was widely circulated amongst believers of the time, during the first century. And the writer of Hebrews tells us this in Hebrews chapter 2, starting in verse 14. The Son also became flesh and blood, for only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he be set free, or could he set free, excuse me, all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Now to back that up, the Apostle Paul, the, the first century Christian leader and teacher, knew that people were going to have a hard time with people who were dying. Because at the time, there was this kind of prevalent thought that anyone who, right around the time that Jesus lived and passed away, so like within 20 or 30 years, there was this time that if they were the first wave of people that believing that Jesus was the Son of God, that, that the writer of Hebrews is just talking about, they were actually thought that they were never going to die because, you know, Jesus didn't really die, so I'm never really going to die. So, you know, I'm going to fall asleep for three days and I'm going to wake up and walk around the face of this earth. But then an odd thing started happening. People died and they stayed dead, at least in their bodily form. They didn't walk around on the earth again. They were, they were gone. And so the early church was distraught and they couldn't really figure out what to do when someone died. They were sorrowful and they were scared and they started questioning their faith. And Paul looked at the churches in an area of what is now northern Greece, modern day northern Greece. It was called Thessalonica. And he wrote them a couple of letters, three of them really, but one of them got lost. We have the last two. And 
in those three letters, he actually dealt with this very issue. And in essence, he, he tells them, look, you're, you may be sad, you may be scared, you may think that your faith in this guy, Jesus, was misplaced, but trust me, we don't grieve like those with no hope. We don't grieve like those with no hope. We aren't scared of death. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt what is to come. Actually, he wrote these words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. If you want to follow along, great. We don't have the scripture pulled up for it. But he says, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. And so hard pause here. This is where people who haven't checked out of Christianity even more start checking out of Christianity because they they start to think, what, do you, what, does ha what does hope have to do with this? You're talking about a bodily death. What does hope have to do with this? Paul picks up in verse 14, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So you pump the brakes a minute and you go, wait a minute. Are you declaring that I'm actually going to live again? Paul goes on in verse 15. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, the people that are alive right now, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. What? Verse 17. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Tough to be encouraged when you don't actually know what's going on, right? Tough to be encouraged when you're still fearing the unknown. Tough to be encouraged when you're going, wait a minute, what are you talking about being caught up in the air and the Lord coming down and shouting commands at me? In my own life and in my mom's life, we went through this same sort of thing. I went through this scripture passage with her throughout the 10 years of her recovery and her remission. Because we then came face to face with death and we saw that Jesus was bigger. As I said, I became a believer in Jesus during this period of my mom's, really her cancer treatment. So it was right at the beginning of all this. And almost 10 years to the day of her kind of remission, her celebration of remission, almost 10 years to the day, she found out her cancer was back and that it was metastatic, meaning that it was now in her bloodstream and it was not localized to just an, an area. And not only was it in her bloodstream, but it was attacking her bones attaching and forming lesions and tumors on her bones, and most notably on her brain and her skull. Now, if you, if you have never heard of metastatic cancer before, it is, uh, it is the closest thing to uh, a pronouncement of death. And she fought and she fought and she fought and she kept fighting and we kept, she kept trying treatments and we kept doing things and all these other things. But she entered that battle knowing that she wouldn't survive. And all of us did as well. And actually five years ago this week, so five years ago, actually on Monday, she died. Um, it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. And writing this sermon during this kind of remembrance has, has really left me kind of shaken a little bit. Because I can vividly remember her. I can vividly remember seeing her frail, hairless, broken, pain-filled body, thin. She hadn't been able to eat in that hospital bed. She couldn't even look at a dim light without it searing her brain. She had tumors attached to the back part of her brain. And every time she would even look at just the dimmest of lights, turn her phone on the darkest setting, it would sear her eyes and she couldn't look at it. She stopped being able to eat. She couldn't hold food down because tumors had literally attached to her stomach. And anytime it would contract to hold 
food, it would get painful and food would come back up. I was living in the Atlanta area at the time and having to commute back and forth to make sure I saw mom. And I got into town. So this would have been five years ago, a week ago. I got into town on a Friday and I went over to mom and dad's house and she was laying in her hospice bed and she could barely look at me. And, uh, I I walked in I said, Hey mom. And she looked at me. She told me she loved me, could barely speak, told me she loved me and then looked at my dad and said, okay. (laughs) And that's all she said. And within an hour, the hospice people there were there to take her to the care center where she basically became unresponsive and passed away four days later. From a Friday to a Tuesday, she held on and then poof, she was gone. In that moment, in her living room, the living room that I grew up in, where she was laying in that bed, she looked at my dad and she was not afraid to die. And I sat there in that room with her and I was not afraid for her to die. I knew that she would be dancing with Jesus, not ru- not just running, not just bodily raised, not just all of those things. She would be dancing with Jesus, that she wouldn't be in excruciating pain and that, that we, as her kids, the ones who believe in Jesus as well, would ultimately be with her again. Because hear me when I tell you this, Lux, death is not the end. It's not. Many people believe that when you die, this is the thing we've been dancing around. This is the thing that the Apostle Paul is dancing around. Many people believe that when you die, you just poof, you you vanish into thin air. And many people believe that you just, or you turn into dust, you do nothing. But actually, if you start to look at many religions and faith systems, a lot of them believe that there's something after this life, they just don't know what they haven't really been able to pin it. If it do you turn into a flower or do you, you know, do you do all these other things? Most of the time you need to give a certain amount of money or time or sacrifice, or you need to do a certain thing or behave a certain way for a certain amount of time to get into that second life. Not the game, because that's a that's a freely downloadable game on GitHub right now. A lot of times you have to do certain things to get into this afterlife. You need to please the God or the deity that you're serving. But Christianity, people that follow Jesus, people that believe that Jesus is who he says he is, Christianity is the only belief system, the only faith structure that actually believes that God did something for us to get us into eternal life. All we need to do is believe that Jesus is who he says he is. That's it. That's all he needs from us. That starts this journey. We need to believe that Jesus is the son of God who walked this earth, who served as a sinless, perfect sacrifice for our sins, who rose from the dead, who ascended into heaven, and who will come again because Jesus is alive, because death was not the end. And just like my mom's life did not end that day, her real life started. I mean, sure, her earthly, broken, cancer-filled, painful body was dead. The, the, the vessel that her, uh, her held her for however many 60-some-odd years on this earth was gone, but she's living eternally, forever, with Jesus, because all she did was say yes to that journey with him. I mean, it doesn't mean we weren't sad. I mean, far from it. Every June 20th, we celebrate Mom's Heavenly Homecoming. We call it Mom Day. It's still extremely sad, and I still get depressed on that day and can't figure out why. Well, I can figure out why, but can't figure out why I can't get out of it. But let me tell you something. We held a memorial service for her a few short weeks after she passed. Over 300 people showed up, which is insane. And my brother and sister and I led worship. I was a worship pastor, their worship pastors. We led worship. And I'm talking about live music, singing, hands raised. It was a worship gathering. It was a celebration. There was sorrow. There was sadness. But there was no fear. 
There was no fear of where she is. There was no fear of where anybody else was going. There was only joy because we know that death is not the end. There's this deep seated joy with understanding that exact same thing, with telling that fear of death and suffering and pain and misery that it's missing the mark, that it's just fear from the enemy, that he's trying to waylay you and distract you because Jesus doesn't just save us from our sins. He also saves us from our fears. And that means the fear of death. He saved us from that fear. When Jesus hung on the cross in his final moments, he shouted, it is finished. He defeated death. He finished it. He proved that we can be resurrected just like he was for eternal life in heaven with him because death is not the end. And I want you, wherever you are right now, I want you to be able to experience that same joy that I have, that unrelenting peace that I know where I'm going and I know where my mom went. My sole mission in this life is to help people understand that the reason Jesus came to this earth was not to condemn people who weren't like him, but instead to love them to show them peace and unity, to bring them in to his family. In just a moment, I, I want to give you all an opportunity to respond to this message. The chat has been amazing, and death wears thy sting. Amen, shock. I want to give you all an opportunity to respond to this message, to become part of this family that we are here at Lux. And there's no special magic that needs to happen. And there's nothing you need to say or download some weird app. You don't need to do any of that. There's no weird rituals or anything. All you need to do is say yes to following Jesus. Yes to the journey that Jesus wants to start with you today. I'm going to pray and I'm going to guide you in this time. And I want all of you to repeat these words with me in your heart or, you know, out loud or wherever you are. I want you to repeat these words with me. Let's pray. Dear God, I, I know when I die that I know I'm going to have to give an account of my life to you directly. I confess I have ignored you. I know I have sinned against you, and I have lived by my plan, not yours. I want that to change, starting right now. I want to turn away from my sins and towards you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for all I've done wrong, so that I don't have to pay the penalty anymore. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. I know only your grace can save me, Lord. Jesus, thank you for loving me so much that you took my guilt on yourself. You made me acceptable now and always. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you will come to keep your promises, to save, to redeem, to show your grace, to show your love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, for some of you who are watching along or some of you that are on demand with us, for some of you, you've said those words or something like it before, and you're taking this time as a reaffirmation of the faith, kind of a re-up of the faith that you had declared to Jesus, a re-upping of, yeah, I'd, I shouldn't be scared of death. I know, I know where I'm going. And so if that's you, amazing, and thank you for joining me in that prayer. But for some of you, you might be saying that type of prayer for the very first time. <laughs> and if this is your first time saying yes to that life-changing, fear-eliminating relationship with Jesus Christ, man, I, I want to celebrate with you. A and so does the rest of luck. So does the rest of chat. So does the rest of our Discord channel. So does the rest of our church. This is a journey that you're starting on, one that leads to a fearless life. And we want to join you in that. We want to help you in that. But, but the only way to do that is if we know exactly who you are. 
We need to know about it. I think my camera just died there, huh? You can still hear my voice though, right? Oh, that's fantastic. Well, not sure what happened with my camera, but I would love, love, love. Of course, this is right during the time when I want you to respond. <laughs> you can follow along with exclamation point committed right in the chat. And you can take a few next steps with us as we fill out the, the journey with you, as we follow along. There's going to be a little form from this link that pops up and, and, and follow along with that. Or, you know, we can put a five in the chat right now, which is like raising your hand in a public setting. It's going to be scary, but putting a five in chat right now or filling out that form at exclamation point committed is your way of publicly telling us man, I want to start this journey and we wanted, we want to help you. We want to be able to follow up with you and to help you and pray with you and talk with you and answer any questions that you may have, but we need to know about it. So fill out the form at exclamation point committed or a five in the chat. I want to celebrate with you. I'm going to go fix my camera in just a second because I'm going to be hanging out on the couch in just a little bit, the virtual couch. The rest of us later on are going to be hanging out in our Discord server. Before we get to that, however, we actually have a small little video from our very own The Lift, aka Pastor Mark, who wants to chat to us just a little bit about what it takes to keep this church going. Check this out. Hey everybody, thank you so much for making Lux Digital Church part of your week. A special thank you to Chino Mage who was willing to step in and preach so that me and my family were able to be absent and be on vacation together and, and take our girls out to the beach, which was really awesome. So special thank you to you, Chino Mage. If you are here for the very first time tonight and you're a guest, I just want to tell you that there's going to be a link in the chat for a guest. It allows you to go and fill out a quick survey on our website to let us know how we did tonight. We don't ask for any personal information. We don't follow up with you. Literally all that we do is ask for some feedback on how we did and how we might be able to do better. On top of that, I want to encourage you tonight. This is the point in our service where we continue our time of worship through giving. And there are multiple ways to give at Lux, but the best way to do that is on our website. And so you can use the link in chat as well. And there's an easy to use box right on our website that allows you to set up one-time gifts, regular weekly gifts, regular monthly gifts. And here pretty soon, we're going to be introducing text to give as well. So if you want to give just through a quick text message, you're going to be able to do that too. I want to thank every single person who's given anything to Lux, who's seen what we're doing, who's believed in the dream to see gamers come to know Jesus, to see a spiritual revival inside the nations and inside the church through a group of people that the church has largely, for the most part, overlooked, that being gamers. Thank you so much for supporting Lux uh, the, the way that you have over this past year, almost a year and a half now. It's been such an encouragement and a privilege and a pleasure to be able to be your pastor. I get to wake up every day and do that, and that's largely because of you. So thank you for being willing to serve Lux. Thank you for being willing to give so sacrificially and generously to Lux. We're going to go ahead for a quick one minute intermission. You can use that link uh, link in the chat for giving during that intermission. And then we'll be right back here on the couch. Well, it'll be right back with Chino Mage doing a, a live AMA uh, post show himself uh, from his location here right after service. If you have questions for him or anything from the message that he preached tonight or questions about receiving Jesus or salvation, which Chino Mage did bring up tonight in his message, then I would encourage you, ask those questions in the chat as he'll be responding to those questions and more in the post-service experience. Other than that, please consider coming to Discord tonight. There's another link in chat for that. We would love to hang out with you and get to know you. We have people in the post-service rooms. We're gonna be asking really specific questions. We'll post that in the chat as well. We're just gonna be hanging out and chatting and you can stop by if you're a first time guest into our welcome room or if you need prayer, we have prayer rooms there as well. So there'll be someone there live who can actually live pray for you. So thank you so much for being here tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. We're going to go to a brief one minute intermission and then we'll be right back. On Demand family, I really hope you guys enjoyed that talk. Thank you so much for joining us here on YouTube. I know sometimes it's difficult for you guys to join us live on Wednesday evenings and that's why we do the content on demand here on YouTube. That way you guys can watch it whenever it works for you. But if you ever have the opportunity to join us live, we would love for you to do that. We're live every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. EST at twitch.tv slash Lux Digital Church. One thing that you miss out on by joining us here on demand 
is the opening time of banter and then the closing segments of Ask Me Anything that we do right here on the couch live where we get to talk to you. We always laugh. We have a ton of fun. We get to chat and just hang out live, which is a very unique experience. And we would love for you to join us with that. We would also like for you to join our Discord over at discord.gg slash Lux Digital Church. That's really the home of our church. That's where we do life together day in, day out. We get to play games. We get to hang out. We get to chat. And that's where we grow together as a church family. So join us there. If you enjoy what we're doing here on YouTube and what we're doing with Lux as a whole, you can financially support us over at luxdigitalchurch.com. There's an opportunity to support us there. But nonetheless, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will talk to you very, very soon.